the family of a woman murdered in 2014, tells me they've already forgiven the man charged with her murder. They say they have been waiting for justice. A crash involving a car and a school bus kills one person and sends three others to the hospital. The jackpot just keeps growing. Saturday's Powerball jackpot has reached a record $800 million. This is WKYT News at 5. The victim's family says they've been waiting for this day. This afternoon, the man accused of killing a Lexington teenager went before a judge. Alan Burgess is charged in the shooting death of Kiara Green on Scottsdale Circle in June 2014. Her family watched today as he entered his plea. WKYT's Victor Puente talks to them about their search for justice in our top story at 5. After this arraignment, some of Kiara Green's family told me it's been a long wait for justice. But they also said they've already forgiven the man that police say murdered her in 2014. Alan Burgess was brought to Lexington yesterday from the Bourbon County Detention Center. Some family of the woman he's accused of killing were in the courtroom for his arraignment this afternoon. Nervous, shaken, I mean, but filled with joy because we've been waiting on this day for a little bit over two years and we're just ready for justice to be served. Kiara Green was one of four people shot at a home on Scottsdale Circle in June of 2014. The three others survived, but Green died from her injuries. After the shooting, police say they found a baseball cap and DNA from that cap matched Alan Burgess. During an arrest in 2015, police say they took a handgun from Burgess and lab testing confirmed that gun was the same one that killed Green. They also say Burgess had a long-standing feud with one of the men at that home. With that evidence, a warrant for a charge of murder was filed in December. Today, Green's cousin said the only thoughts they have towards Burgess are ones of forgiveness. I mean, even though he did do this to our cousin and um, my uncle's daughter and auntie's daughter, we were a family that forgives as how we were brought up. Burgess is also facing charges in Bourbon County. Those include resisting arrests, fleeing or evading police, and wanton endangerment first degree. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Green's family asks anyone with additional information on the shooting to call police. One person died in an early morning crash involving a school bus. It happened just after 7 o'clock this morning on US 119 in the Blair community that's east of Harlan. Three people on the bus were hurt. The person who died was in another vehicle. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is at the live desk now with more on what happened. Caitlin? It was a scene I'm sure no bus driver wants to experience this morning. A bus driver was en route to pick up kids for school when a car crossed the center line and hit the bus straight on. It happened just after 7 o'clock this morning on US 119 in Harlan County. Police tell us a black Honda Accord driven by Bridget Mallory of Lynch was traveling northbound on 119 when her vehicle struck the bus head on. The 32-year-old was pronounced dead at the scene. It's not clear yet what caused her vehicle to cross the center line. Police say although it's terrible, a, law, a life was lost today. They're thankful more students weren't on the bus at the time of the accident. Uh, anytime you have a school bus involved in a collision, uh, you know, it is it's very uh, scary. And, you know, to think that a school bus is involved in a collision, um, you know, you're just worried about the kids. Uh, you know, this is a very sad situation that anyone lost their life. But uh, anytime that a uh, school bus is involved, uh, it raises concern. Now, the driver of the school bus, Eugene Stagnolia, teacher's aide Wanda Tinsley, and the sole student passenger were treated and later released from the Harlan County ARH Hospital. At the live desk, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Caitlin, thank you. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. We started the day with rain, and there's still some more on the way for the weekend. It's part of a storm system bringing some big changes to our area. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is here with a first look at the forecast. Chris? Yeah, indeed. Kind of an ugly day that is wrapping up across the area, but it's nowhere near as wet as how we started things out. Show you where we've been before we show you where we are going. 8 o'clock this morning, boy, it was nasty out there for the trip into work, school, wherever we were going. We had those raindrops coming through at a pretty good clip, though. We get into the afternoon, and the sky 
skies slowly but surely dry up throughout the entire area. And that's where we are now with a mainly cloudy sky across central and eastern Kentucky. One little batch of some raindrops in the northeastern parts of the Bluegrass State, up around Maysville, AA Highway. Temperatures, though. Hey, that's the one good thing about the day 50 to 55 degrees, up to 52 now in Mount Sterling. You see that number changing on the fly. If you're out this evening, only upper 40s, mainly cloudy. A sprinkle or two a possibility. We'll focus though on an area of low pressure coming out of the Lone Star State of Texas as we go into the weekend. That's going to bring rain, mild temperatures later tomorrow, then tomorrow night and Sunday. We've got some snow that will take over as thermometers drop more than 25 degrees from tomorrow afternoon in less than 24 hours in a Sunday middle of the day. Then early next week, oh, it's going to get a little colder. Arctic blast is on the way and it's packing some snow with it. We'll break down a busy and a winter-like seven-day forecast in a few. A shooting injured a Louisville area police officer. Sh Shively police say Officer Wes Singleton, along with the suspect, were wounded while exchanging gunfire this morning. Officer Singleton had been serving a narcotics warrant at the time. Singleton is at University Hospital in Louisville with wounds to the leg area. He's been with the Shively Police Department for six years. Um, excellent officer. Um, all of them are. Everybody that wears this uniform does an excellent job. The suspect was also taken to University Hospital, but there is no word on his condition. Louisville Metro Police are investigating the shooting. Federal authorities have arrested two men after an investigation linked them to terrorist organizations. Officials say one of them fought with terrorists in Syria before coming back to the U.S. As Weijia Zhang shows us, the arrests have reignited the debate about allowing refugees into America. Wearing a gray plaid shirt and glasses, Omar Faraj Saeed Al Hardan walked into federal court for the first time on charges he was providing support to ISIS. He was providing himself as part of that support. That means that he was prepared to take whatever action on his own behalf to assist the organization. Al Hardan has been linked to another terror suspect, Oz Mohammed Yunus Al Jayeb, who spent several months fighting with terror groups in Syria. Officials say Al Jayeb wrote in the spring of 2013, I am coming to Syria. I have planned a route and everything. In November, he followed that route through Turkey into Aleppo. CBS News national security analyst Juan Zarate says it can be hard to track would be terrorists trying to join the fight in Syria. This is one of the blind spots for U.S. intelligence and certainly one of the things that keeps Homeland Security officials awake at night uh, and this case is a demonstration of that. Investigators do not believe either man was planning an attack in the U.S., but Republicans say their arrest is enough evidence to shut down an Obama administration program that will bring up to 10,000 Syrian refugees to America. They're ticking time bombs and how many ticking time bombs are we going to bring in in this refugee program without a proper vetting system in place. But the White House says the president has no plans to end the program. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, Washington. U.S. officials believe an estimated 250 Americans have traveled to Syria to fight with terrorist groups. The prize just keeps growing. Today, the Powerball jackpot jumped to $800 million. This is some new territory yes. here. The bigger it gets, the more people who want to jump in and get a shot at winning. WKYT's Garrett Weimer is live now in Lexington with more on the frenzy to get those tickets. Garrett? Yeah, I'm here at the Hamburg Shell, and if you thought Powerball fever couldn't get any hotter, then, well, you were wrong. That's because what was a $700 million jackpot is now up to $800 million. The story's the same all over town and, no doubt, the Commonwealth and country. Excitement continues to grow, as does the jackpot for Saturday's record Powerball drawing. Lottery officials say there have been 19 drawings since the last jackpot. And even with all the excitement surrounding Saturday's big prize, they still encourage you to play responsibly. Never spend more than you can afford. Um, never spend, um, you know, it, it, spend your fun money. Um, you know, spend the money that you would spend on a pizza. Spend the money that you would spend on a movie. Um, just please play responsibly and, and don't, don't go overboard. And the deadline to play is 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Now, folks who work here say they expect tomorrow to be 
even busier. They say they'll likely have one dedicated line just for uh, people who are buying lottery tickets. A lot of people hoping to win big this weekend, and uh, myself included. Live in Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. All right, glad, glad you're going to try to win there, Garrett. The cash option for tomorrow's prize is at 496 million. The odds of winning, one in 292 million. I think it's going to reach a billion. That would I be. I mean, really? Yeah. I think it's I always hope nobody, yeah, I'm hoping nobody wins, so it'll do Ooh, that. Man. <laughs> All right, another road game this weekend mm -hmm. for those Wildcats. They hope to rebound from their last trip, which did not end well. WKYT's Rob Bromley is here with more, Rob. Well, as you know, the Cats are coming off that bad loss at LSU. How will they fare now going on the road to Alabama tomorrow night? The Cats were dominated up front in Tuesday's game in Baton Rouge. John Calipari had his team back on the practice floor yesterday. He said it was rough, one of the tougher practices he's had. A lot of body-to-body -body physical stuff. Um, and they responded fairly well. So... Came in this morning, shot free throws, walked through some stuff. But we just need to rebound better. We need to create space both on offense. Um, we need to create space when we're trying to rebound. And so we worked on all that. But it was good. So it is down to Alabama, Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa early tomorrow night. It'll be a 6 o'clock tip on the SEC Network. Cal said today that guard Dominique Hawkins has not been able to practice since turning his ankle against Ole Miss last weekend, so that's not good news. Thank you, Rob. The Cats return to Rupp next Tuesday night to take on Mississippi State. Coming up, we'll tell you about a new service being offered at a Kroger in Lexington. You don't even have to get out of your car to shop. There's a new drug in the fight against bladder cancer, how it uses the patient's body to fight the disease in better living. And police bust a theft ring in central Kentucky. We'll show you how the suspects were taking advantage of a store on WKYT News at 530. When big news breaks, be the first to know. Download the WKYT News app and turn on push alerts. Breaking news at your fingertips when you need to know what's going on. Push alerts now available on the WKYT News app. At Bryant Heating and Cooling, your home comfort is our only mission. That's why maintenance matters. And with winter right around the corner, now's the perfect time. Call now for preventive maintenance, just $64.95. It's a small price to pay for peace of mind. While some airports offer a few flights to a few places a few days a week, Louisville International offers daily flights to more of the places you want to go. You can get there from there, eventually. Or you can see where we can take you. Visit us today. Monster Jam, February 27th. See world champions Grave Digger and Bounty Hunter. Kids seats start at just $10. Monster Jam, February 27th. Rupp Arena. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield wants to know, what's your health insurance IQ? True or false? A lot of people qualify for financial help to lower the cost of their health insurance. False? Actually, millions of people have qualified for financial help on their health insurance through the Affordable Care Act. A family of four making about $95,000 a year or less may qualify. You are required by law to have health coverage. True. Yep. Most people were required to have health coverage starting in 2014. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield can help protect your family's health with one easy call. Did you know all their plans cover doctor visits, prescription drugs, hospital stays, and more? Yes, with zero dollar preventive care. The deadline to enroll is earlier this year, so don't wait. Call now for free expert guidance and a free quote. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Call us at 1-800-769-7581 for a free quote. That's 1-800-769-7581. Hey, you know where to find me. 98.1 The Bull. It's your favorite radio station. It's the way that we get to you. Nothing like a great song. There's nothing like country music. Officer Dawn and Deanne Mornings. 60 minute bull rides all day. First thing in the morning. And last thing at night. Better country, 98.1 The Bull. The best songs. The biggest artists. All in one place. 98.1 The Bull. We'll see you there. At Bryant Heating and Cooling, your home comfort is our only mission. That's why maintenance matters. And with winter right around the corner, now's the perfect time. Call now for preventive maintenance, just $64.95. It's a small price to pay 
for peace of mind. WKYT First Alert Weather is brought to you by Cartown Kia. Now, your hour-by-hour hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Rolling our way into the weekend. It's mild, but it's kind of ugly out there. We had a lot of rain early in the day. Still a little leftover sprinkle or two, and then we get through tomorrow, and it's game on for winter time in the bluegrass state. A little look outside. How about your evening? It's after 5 o'clock now. It's the weekend. Officially, a lot of folks uh, sounding the horn on that weekend, calling it quits for your Friday, the first full week of January in the books. Weather-wise, ending on a much warmer note than how it started. Low 50s out there now. Humidity is still very high. Look at that wind from the south at 9 miles per hour. That may be one of the last times we see a true southerly wind kicking up around here that has a mild flow with it for several weeks to come. We're going into a pattern that is locked and loaded with a lot of winter time, not only over the next two or three weeks, but I think this holds right on into February and early March. We look at the pattern now. 50s across Kentucky. Here's what we're working on. Rain to some snow before the weekend is over. Temperatures take a big old tumble on Sunday. An Arctic cold and some snow will follow that up into the early part of next week. Let's talk about what's going on right now. Your Friday evening Defender Radar Network. Look how quickly those showers are zipping in here. And notice the direction from southwest to northeast. When you see that on a radar trend, that's often a warm flow that you're getting because those south, uh, southerly and southwesterly winds are kind of pushing that precipitation along. Tomorrow, if you want to get outside and take advantage of a decent day, during the daylight hours, for the most part, we're okay. We get into the second half of the afternoon. Things get a little iffy now with the rain shield moving in. That should move in southern Kentucky, southwestern parts of the area, 2 to 5 o'clock, rest of the area between 5 and 8, and it's kind of ugly out there tomorrow evening. Heading to the Bengals playoff game tomorrow night up in Cincinnati, you're going to want to take the ponchos. You're going to take the rain gear. It's going to be windy, and you're going to see rain arriving as we get into the game. Here's the breakdown of where we go locally. Rain and gusty winds tomorrow night as temperatures drop. By daybreak Sunday, light snow is now developing from I-75 and west. Quickly, Sunday morning, that band of light snow works its way across the rest of the area with snow showers and some light accumulations on Sunday with temperatures that will drop through the 20s. Then we skip Monday. It has nothing really going on. Let's go into Tuesday. Arctic cold front arrives. Light snow, gusty winds. That could put down some accumulations as well. Storm system number one, we just talked about that. It gets on out of here. The impressive one of the two, uh, still to me, is the one we've highlighted for several days now for this push of Arctic air coming as we go into Tuesday. That will have almost a squall line of snow with that, with gusty winds. And look at the numbers after tomorrow. That Whatever you wake up with on Sunday morning for your thermometer is going to be the high for the day. As we go throughout the afternoon, we're dropping it through the 20s. We're into the teens by Sunday evening. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's a cold pattern. I see some impacts on school in that forecast, possibly. You got a shot Tuesday and Wednesday, absolutely. All right. Thank you, Chris. Live look at election and traffic flow right now as we get rush hour, and we're okay on the circle and man of war. Now, we do have a collision. There's a crash outbound for Sells Road. This one is at man of war near the airport. It has the right lane blocked, and traffic's a little slow right now in the turn lane and that, uh, that through lane because of that. Drive times, you can see everything looks normal. One exception to Georgetown, a little slower right now, an extra five minutes. That's just very heavy traffic on the interstate, plus police are running radar near the Fayette-Scott County line that could be slowing things down just a little bit. Now back to the studio. Thank you, Officer Don. There is a new way to get your groceries in Lexington, and you don't even have to leave your car. We'll show you how it all works ahead. Wheels Fun and Fit players are an inspiration. I swim 2,400 meters daily. I actually competed in a Tough Mudder competition. There's even a football player. I was cornerback. I loved it. Next wheel. Wheel of Fortune, tonight at 7 on WKYT. If you've been in an accident with a semi-truck, let me give you some advice. The trucking company has investigators on the case right now. So should you. Time is of the essence. Evidence disappears. We have a crash team that can be on scene within hours. There are lawyers in our firm that only handle semi-truck cases. They eat it, breathe it, sleep it. All cases are not the same. Don't wait. Let's get started today. Morgan & Morgan for the people. Ciao, I'm Sam Dick, inviting WKYT TV viewers to join me on a tour to classic Italy, October 8th to the 16th. 
Our vacation includes two nights near Venice, two nights in Florence, and three nights in the eternal city of Rome. We'll also visit Vatican City and travel through the charming Tuscan countryside. Our tour includes all airfare, great hotels, many delicious meals, and more. For your free brochure, call Holiday Vacations at 1-800-826-2266. I grew up in Harlem, but I've lived in Lexington since graduating from UK, and it's given me a real appreciation for what it means to stand for Kentucky. Whether it's a big city or a small town, the people of Kentucky want our state to succeed. And we here at WKYT want to do our part to share the stories of difference makers who make our state a better place to live. I'm WKYT's Barbara Bailey, and I stand for Kentucky. Can't figure you out, Barry Allen. That's because I work hard to hide who I really am. If soon find out who you care for, who you love, he'll take them from you. Should all the you can't keep things from her forever. Then that's what I'll do. I'll tell Patty I'm the Flash. <laughs> All new episodes return Tuesday, January 19th on The CW. Every morning is an eye-opening morning on CBS This Morning. Start with responsible, intelligent information and conversation. Take me back to that moment that we just saw in this confrontation. Searchers race to save people trapped for days in Colorado. In an interview you'll see only on CBS This Morning. Start with world-class original reporting. Start thinking. CBS This Morning. Grab your popcorn and soda for... The New York Times said of this 2015 sequel starring Channing Tatum, the plot is as flimsy as a G-string. Think you know it? Jeopardy! Tonight at 7.30 on WKYT. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Mexican drug lord El Chapo has been recaptured. He's been on the run since escaping from a maximum security prison seven months ago. The Mexican Navy captured him after receiving a tip. There was a shootout before the arrest. Five people died and one Mexican Marine was injured. You can now get your groceries without even getting out of your car. You like this idea, don't I you? I do. It started in Versailles and now Kroger is expanding the number of stores where you can order your groceries online. Mike Linden shows us how it works. A new way to purchase groceries at Kroger has come to Lexington. It's called ClickList, and it's all done online. We're trying to provide the customer with a service that, that, will, that will help them with their lifestyle and their obligations and make everything speedier and faster for them. With more than 40,000 items to purchase, customers can complete their grocery list without ever having to step foot inside the supermarket. Kroger officials say convenience is the name of the game for ClickList. Customers set up a time to come and pick up their order, pull up, call the number listed in front of their space, and in a matter of minutes, employees bring their order right out to them, all with skipping the shopping and the checkout line. ClickList has only been offered for less than two weeks at the Beaumont Center Kroger in Lexington, but some first-time customers say they'll be back for more. We don't have to get the kids out in the rain. We come in, they take care of it, we stay dry, less moving parts to get in and out of the grocery store, and it's a lot faster. ClickList is free to use on three orders, then it costs a flat fee of $4.95 for each order after that. I think the time that you spend at home planning your week ahead is worth any $5 bonus buys, per se, that you might grab when you're in the store, and I think it kind of pays for itself. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. Pretty interesting. Now, ClickList is also offered at the Kroger in Richmond and Elizabethtown. It's coming soon to the Kroger on Richmond Road, which Jennifer's happy about, and in Brandon Crossing. The island of St. Lucia is in need of help for their snake population, and we'll explain why they're reaching out to Kentucky on WKYT News at 5 30. There's a new way to fight bladder cancer using the patient's own immune system. And the reason constant email checking can be bad for your health. Those stories next in Better Living. Get WKYT news and weather updates on 1045 The Cat. Medical malpractice is the third leading cause of death in America. 
And more shocking is that the same doctors commit the same malpractice over and over again. Birth defects, brain damage, cerebral palsy, cancer misdiagnosis, and yes, even death. Doctors and hospitals have insurance to protect you when mistakes are made. Don't wait to pursue your claim. Time can run out. A lifetime is a long time. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. Hi, I'm Stephen Colbert. And I'm James Corden. And I'm the host of The Late Show. It's not enough time. CBS Late Night is on a roll. We're just two cool dudes who are ready to take comedy head on. <laughs> the Late Show with Stephen Colbert. And The Late Late Show with James Corden. The cutting edge in Late Night. Colbert! Corden! Late Show! Late Late Show still not there! Weeknights, only CBS. <laughs> At the end of the broadcast, I'm most proud of what we have done as a team. This is the ultimate team sport, television news. And all of the people that have contributed to that night's broadcast, people who have risked their lives to tell the news and to deliver to the American people the highest quality news broadcast in the world today, that is a very satisfying feeling. We all know history isn't written with pens, but bullets. War is God's way of moving the human race forward. I'm here because the future of the world is in peril. Because of a man named Vandal Savage. I chose you eight to travel throughout time to stop them. You got the wrong guy. Hero in on my resume. Where I'm from. You aren't just considered heroes. You're legends. Now it's up to you, shall we? You're just a lost assassin. You're just a pair of good-for-nothing criminals. I can live with that. We have the power to change our own fate. They're here. DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Series premiere Thursday, January 21st on The CW. Every family has one member who says whatever's on their mind. Name a part of your body with hair you've never once cut or trimmed. Your tush. <laughs> what would you say on Family Feud? I love this show. Family Feud, one full hour starting at 7 on The CW Lexington. It's time for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. There's a new drug giving hope to bladder cancer patients. It uses the patient's own immune system to attack tumors. Don Champion shows us the difference it can make. It lets me live a little bit longer. There was a time when Lee Eric Newton thought he only had months to live. Diagnosed with bladder cancer in 2010, he'd undergone chemotherapy only to have the cancer spread to his brain. With dwindling options, the 51-year-old found a trial of a new immunotherapy drug called atezolizumab. All of a sudden, my tumors began to drop in size. According to Dr. Matt Galski from Mount Sinai Hospital, the drug tears down the protective layers around the tumors. What these drugs do is peel back that shield and allow the immune system to recognize the cancer is foreign and attack it. It's the first new treatment for metastatic bladder cancer in 30 years. It doesn't work for everyone, but Newton's been on the drug for more than a year now. His cancer is stable and he's looking to the future. I didn't look a month to two months or three months in advance. I'm now planning to see my daughter graduate from high school. Newton also has a message for smokers. I used to joke around as kids and we'd say, yeah, we're going to quit once we get cancer or die. That's when we quit. But uh, it's not a joke anymore once you get cancer. Smoking causes about half of all bladder cancers. Don Champion, CBS News, New York. The drug isn't currently approved to treat bladder cancer, but the FDA recently granted it breakthrough therapy designation to get it approved faster. Common side effects include fatigue and small rashes. Keeping a constant eye on your email can be bad for your health. 
A new study called You Got Mail looked at email use. It found the number of emails you get isn't the problem. Instead, people who check their email from early in the morning until late at night have higher stress levels. So it's not necessarily about how many emails we receive, but when and how we access the email itself. The study is recommending people consider switching off emails and email alerts when they're not working. For more health education and consumer news, go to WKYT.com and click on Better Living. Now here's what's coming up at 530.